Hi again, welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another episode of Around the NAL. It's a busy week. I'm right in between construction jobs and just found this tiny little window to where I could come look in the lens again and say hello. Today, we've got a couple great interviews for you on Around the NAL. All right, we're gonna get right into our interview segment. We've got a couple great matchups in the NAL coming this weekend. We're going to start with the Cedar Rapids River Kings at the Colorado Spartans. Got a couple amazing guests. My friend, Darren Speedy Clark, head coach of the Cedar Rapids River Kings. How you doing, brother? I'm doing okay, how about yourself? Doing good, man, doing good. Uh, you're coming off an 87 to 14 victory, the most points in Cedar Rapids River Kings history. <laughs> wow, congrats on that big win. Thank you, thank you. We clicked real quick. The offense came out real fast. We put up four points real fast in the first quarter, and we did what we had to do. And the defense also had four interceptions with three touchdowns. So for you, why is going on the road against the Colorado Spartans different, and how do you approach a team like that differently? Oh, it's going to be a great opportunity to go to Colorado to play against the NAL team, the last league I played in before I retired, to play against Coach Shaw. Me and Coach Shaw was in camp together with San Antonio in 2013, so it's going to be a chess mate. And also, no Tate Brooks. So it's going to be a good chess mate game out there tonight. Well, this week. Since you're on the road against an NAL team and your team is part of the AIF, do you play by the NAL rules? Play by the NA NAL rules. It's considered like the CIF, so I'm used to that lead. So we have two motions, just like they have two motions. I also can let the tight end go out for a pass. And also, I can run a full receiver set other than just leaving the running back in the backfield because in the AIF, we have to have a running back in the backfield like the a AFL league. In the AIF, what are your kicking rules? Do you have the deuce? Yes, sir, we get the deuce. So how does your special teams prepare this week for the rebound net? Oh, yeah, we've been ready because, you know, I did in the AFL days. So I already been practicing all week to catch the ball off the net, get my guys ready for that. And I also have a new running back that I signed from the BC Lions that was just released. So he ready to make some plays for me this weekend. Ooh, ooh do we get to know his name? Yeah, um, it's going to be real, real. It's going to be a good surprise for the league. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I know some BC Lions running backs. So are you even set up to where you can set up something like nets and, and practice with? Yeah, in our indoor facility field that we practice on every day, we had the nets back there, so we practiced on it last night. I let them work on catching 10 apiece, like all three of my kit returns so they could get used to it because I did in the AFL days. So I had to show them how to catch it if they was under the net or if they was standing in front of the end zone so they can get used to finding the ball and know that the nets get tighter when they be closer to the goal pole that the, the ball to shoot off. So I had to get them used to playing like that. That's excellent. I mean, because you're not just uh, coaching at that point. You're being a mentor on that specific skill set. Well, uh, being an offensive-minded guy, how much points do you expect to put up on Shaw's defense? I'm trying to average a good 50. Me and my boys coming in now, we're going to try to put the best show on turf real quick at the beginning of the game, try to put the nail in the coffin early. And our defense going to come out fast. Uh, we're going to play all phases of the game, do what we have to do to win the game from offense, defense, and special teams. And what's your score prediction for Coach Shaw? Oh, my score prediction is going to be 63 to 40. Our way. <laughs> man, man, how do you think Coach Shaw will respond to that? Oh, I know he's going to come with it. He's going he gonna to feel the way I feel. Uh, it's going to be vice versa with him, too, you know? Um, coach Shaw, a great coach. Um, I never talked down on great coaches. Uh, coach Tay, a great coach. They have a great organization going on out there in Colorado. But we coming out there to play football. We doing what we have to do so we can take the W back to Cedar Rapids. I know I've got my popcorn ready. What message do you want to send on this show to Coach Shaw? Coach Shaw to know that we coming out to play football. You know, um, we locked in. I got my boys locked in. We've been preparing for them every day. Um, it's going to be a very competitive game, offense, defense, special team. Um, we're going to meet their energy because we've seen what they did on film against the team that they played against, and they also put up a lot of points. 
So we come out there to play football because I know they're going to come play as well. I'm excited. I'm really excited. Thank you, Speedy. Appreciate you coming on. Ladies and gentlemen, Darren Speedy Clark, head coach of the Cedar Rapids River Kings. Thanks for coming on, brother. I right, thanks for having me. As far as the preview goes, the Cedar Rapids River Kings come into town. I think it's going to be a great matchup. Uh, we've got an AIF team, an NAL team going head to head. It's an interesting experience for the fans. I believe in the offense that Darren Speedy Clark is putting together. I believe they're very fast and can put up some points. But I'm sorry, Speedy. I believe more in Fred Shaw's defense, who are also very fast. They swarm around the ball, they hit hard, they cause turnovers. I believe that the Colorado Spartans will take this match 55-37. Next, we've got the marquee matchup, the game of the week in my opinion. I think the Omaha Beef at the Carolina Cobras is a sensational matchup. The Omaha Beef have a long way to travel, and perhaps the Carolina Cobras could tell them a little something about that. But without further ado, I've got another couple special guests today. Let's welcome to the show Coach Mike Tatum of the Omaha Beef and the head coach of the Carolina Cobras. Let's see if I can get this name right. Brandon Negron. Did we do that right, Coach? We did. That, that, was, that was impressive, actually. Fantastic. So I'm going to go right into it. Uh, my first question for you is, since you're going to be opponents this next weekend, do you spend time just kind of hating each other, you know, just kind of getting that game face on all week? I'll let Coach Tatum answer that first. Uh, I don't. I, I I haven't even, honestly, I haven't even thought anything about it or anything like that, man. Just, hey, I mean, I mean, the, the, set, the schedule's set, and we just got to play who's in front of us. I, I mean, I ain't going to spend extra time thinking about another coach or anything negative negatively or anything like that i would say the same thing um you know i have a lot of respect for coach tatum I, I know he's been around this game for a long time i know what his contributions to the game are i think it's a privilege every time you get to coach a football game no matter who the opponent is like he said we focus on what's in front of us one week at a time that's part of the process um and i'm, I'm certainly not going to hate or think negatively about somebody that you know respectfully i look up to as a as a coach that's been around for a long time and, and, and someone that I aspire to be. So I, I'm excited that he's coming here, albeit, uh, you know, for a competition between two of our teams. Great start to this. Oh, awesome. So how long have you coached Coach Negron? Uh, I've been coaching now for 20 years. I mean, I I, I knew early on um, I wasn't going to be a good football player. Um, so I, I ended my, my football career uh, <laughs> in high school um, and I immediately went into coaching. Um, I, I loved the preparation. Um, I love the analysis, knew my athletic limitation. And my son, thankfully, got his mother's genes. Um, and so, you know, I started coaching him at a very young age. He, uh, you know, got several offers to, to play uh, center uh, at the Division Two and some Division Three schools. He elected to go a different way. But, you know, I stayed coaching as, as, as long as he's been alive. So uh, he, he's 22. And, uh, you know, I started coaching at least him around four or five and coached for 20 years. I've coached at the high school level, um, obviously at the professional level um, and did a little college work, some JUCO work and stuff like that. But uh, I think I've, I've found my NFL where I am right now. And you've got a great resume so far. So Coach Tatum, I remember watching you just a few short years ago, catching touchdowns and zigging and zagging through defenses, making scores. You're, you're now the head coach and does, your long career as a player really aid you as a coach? Do you focus on offense because that's primarily where you played? Uh, honestly, I could still go out there and play today um, if given a chance. So if any team needs a wide receiver, I can still play. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I feel like I was molded into doing this um, as my career started to go on and different things like that. I was handed like different duties and different stuff like that to kind of like take the younger guys and um, teammates to another level leading in some type of way. Um, so I guess it was one of those things that I kind of just walked into, you know, and um, my playing career kind of, kind of helped me into the coaching aspect of the life right now. As far as trips go, are you looking forward to the long trip to Greensboro? Long trip? Oh, we're jumping on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we we are flying to Greensboro, North Carolina, and we will get there and we'll relax. And I mean, I'm looking forward to being in some nice weather 
in North Carolina. Well, Coach Negron, you seem to have a pretty well-rounded roster, a lot of NAL vets. What has it been like for you and them to adjust to some of these indoor rules? Um, I mean, I think it's been been fun, to be honest with you. You know, a lot of these guys have played in the IFL and other leagues where, you know, as an example, two-man motion is a part of their game. I don't think it's been a huge uh, educational transition. I mean, I've got smart football players. Um, and a lot of the guys on this roster, I've been coaching since 2020. So, uh, you know, we have working relationships that, that uh, exceed just this season. So we're, we're continuing to make adjustments. We, we watch a lot of film. Um, we watch good film. Uh, Omaha has good film. Uh, Coach Tatum knows how to, how to call an offense. So, um, you know, we, we, we learn from, from what we can find on, on the Internet and, you know, through our, our, our huddle accounts. And, um, it, it, to me, it's been an easy transition. Um, I've got great coaches, you know, that, that spend a lot of time investigating the game and, and what we can do, you know, to get better. Um, and, and I've got good athletes, and I think that's a winning combination. So uh, the adjustment for us has been, been, been welcome, and we're excited about the, the rules of the NAL this year. That's awesome. So, Coach Tatum, what's it been like for you and your guys to adjust on special teams to the new kicking rules? Um, honestly, not being cocky or anything, we're not. Only thing we're adjusting to is the narrow, the more narrow uprights. Um, we don't plan on kicking too many off of the net, as in our kickers should be putting them down the middle. It will be like a slight adjustment, but I don't think it's a point of emphasis. It's just you know, play the net. I mean, it's the biggest thing for us. I mean, the adjustment is, I mean, like I said, just different guys coming from different places and trying to get them all on the same page to, to do the same thing, you know, in the NAL yeah. now. This is a pretty exciting matchup. A lot of people that I've talked to are ranking Carolina number one or Omaha number one. And without fail, whichever one gets number one, the other team <laughs> gets number two. With that said, Coach Negron, are you at all intimidated by coach tatum's offense uh no I, I would definitely wouldn't use the word intimidated um you know i respect it i know what, <laughs> what he's bringing to the to the game um i know what kind of athletes he has uh, on that side of the ball um so you know it, it's a welcome challenge that is going to uh, allow me to see uh where my team is right now uh, especially defensively um uh, but you know no i'm i'm not intimidated and you know as far as rankings are concerned you know, nobody ever got handed a championship trophy based off of rankings, right? So, you know, whether they rank us number one or they rank Omaha number one or us number two or Omaha number two, um, we have to focus on what's in front of us. And what's in front of us is a very good and well-coached Omaha team coming to Greensboro. That's all we're going to focus on. I'm not worried about rankings or, or you know, what level of offense he's going to bring. Um, he's going to bring it. I, I know what kind of coach he is. So, um, but that's where I have to make sure that our guys are prepared for, for exactly that. But uh, it's not intimidating at all. We, we, we're excited about the challenge. Awesome. Coach Tatum, you're coming off a 74 to nothing victory. In arena football, a shutout is very hard to do, no matter if it's a preseason matchup or not. Um, what are your expectations coming away from Greensboro besides getting the win? I'm just finding out what type of team we have. Uh, Traveling across the country, of course, is going to it's going to build character, you know, and it's going to show us exactly what we have. You know, our guys going to fold, you know, is the trip going to be too long or are they going to want to party? You know what I mean? Different things like that. Or are we going to be locked in? Um, we're going to know what type of team we have going into the rest of the season. And it's a good thing that is happening early that we are getting the Carolina team early, you know, so that way. Again, we can see where we are also, like on the measuring stick, you know. Are we are we what people think we are, or do we need a lot of work? So um, we got a lot of young guys. We got a lot of young guys, so we definitely – it's, it's definitely going to show Sunday, Sunday afternoon. Will you two amazing coaches humor me with a score prediction? <laughs> yeah, Coach, you go first. I'll go second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. You know, I, I'll say this, uh, as much as both him and I are, are the coaches on the offensive side of the ball, um, don't don't sleep on my defensive coordinator. Um, you know, he, he's not going to be happy if I, you know, put the score in, into some astronomical numbers. Cobra is 60, Omaha 57. Ooh. Ooh. Coach Tatum. I don't even points? like doing this, but I'm, do, I'm doing this for you guys. I don't even like oh. doing this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, 
the coach, y'all are not scoring 60 points. I'm just that that is never we better not somebody's gonna get fired, coach. I like that though. Somebody's gonna get fired if we get 60 hung on us. It ain't gonna be me. We are not giving <laughs> we are not giving up 60 points, man. We're we're not I get, now. I, I get real creative in the snake pit, coach. I get excited hey, when I'm at home. I, hey, coach, there can I cuss on here? Never mind. There is no freaking way we are giving up 60. But um, I'll just predict. I'll predict a beef win. You know, I mean, it's our second game. We're young. Uh, I don't know what to expect, to be honest with you. Um, if this was later in the season, you'll probably get a more cocky coach out of me. But right now, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. So, now, I do say we score 50-60. Yeah, we score 50-60 easy. I mean, I'll give y'all 30 30 some, 30 some max, maybe Omaha by two, three scores. I'm going I'm to put this recording on the Jumbotron. Please. Oh, there we easy. go. Easy. Oh. The, the only way that don't happen is if y'all just run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, run the clock out. Other than that, yeah, Omaha by two, three scores. Easy. Yeah, you hear that, fans? Get your popcorn ready because oh, it's on. must have on. his head on something this morning. No. <laughs> no. 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 I mean, I'm 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 just confident, man. I'm confident now. If you if you shut me up, I will I will, I will respect it, man. I mean, this happened before, but okay. You I'm looking be forward to it. It's gonna be a great game. Look, this it's gonna no be a great game. He, he, so he, I just I got to do it for the video. I did it for I the video. You. I got you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On that note, thank you. Thanks for humoring me, and thanks for humoring yeah. the fans. Guys, I really appreciate you. It was meant to be a short one. I'm going to turn into the editing bay here. Thanks so much to coming on to Around the NAL, guys. It is Coach Brandon Negron and Coach Mike Tatum. This Sunday, don't miss the Omaha Beef at the Carolina Cobras. It's going to be a fun one. Great interviews, guys. Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, as far as this game goes, man, I think it's going to be a back and forth seesaw battle. I see both defenses hitting hard. I see both offenses doing everything they can to win this game. I see it being very, very, very close. And my guess is, is that the Omaha Beef will do to the Cobras what the Cobras did to the Horsemen last week. I believe the Beef come away with a narrow two-point win. And don't hate me for thinking so. It's just kind of what I think. So, you know what else I think? I think you should join us next time for episode five around the NAL, where we're going to break down the highlights and the action from week two action. So join me next time here on Around the NAL. <laughs>